prayer. What is it? How often should we pray? How do you pray? How could you pray? Pray for what? What is the point of prayer? Have I exhausted it all or do you think there's more? There's more. What position should one be in when you're praying? Well, let's look at the Lord's Prayer, shall we? We all know it. Uh, it's in Matthew 6. I feel like that's in my way. It's in Matthew 6, really starting from verse 9. And I'm not going to go into the background of why Jesus mentioned this, but it was the apostles turned around and said, and he said, well, you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. And forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against, against us. And let us not yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. And everybody goes... Amen. And we've become familiar with it, haven't we? Some of us use the older word, version, you know, our Father who art in heaven. Nothing wrong with that, it's just a different opening gambit. I like this other version, the voice version. Uh, the voice is a contemporary Bible version. But um, it, Jesus would say, your prayers rather should be simple like this. Our Father in heaven, let your name remain holy. Bring about your kingdom. Manifest your will here on earth as it is manifest in heaven. Give us each day that, that day's bread. No more, no less. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those who owe us something. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But let your kingdom be, and let it be powerful and glorious forever. Amen. I like that one as well. Well, we're going to look at the Lord's Prayer. And I want to say this right from the beginning. We become so familiar with it, I think we don't sometimes see the amazing significance behind it. Amen? You with me? You hear it all the time. It can get used at weddings. It gets used at funerals. It get, gets used as part of somebody's daily quote. They will quote those words exactly as part of their prayer. Nothing wrong with that. But we then become familiar. And we think that is some, for some of us, we think that's the only way one should pray. But actually, it was a structure that Jesus was trying to show. Do you understand? Saying this is the elements of how your prayer life should look. So first and foremost, the Lord's Prayer is broken into two parts. First three is about God's desire. These are God-centred first prayers. There's God's names used, God's kingdom, and God's will is called upon. You know, our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. God's name. God's kingdom, may your kingdom come soon. And then God's will, may your will be done on earth. And then the next three are about you and me. Our needs, i.e. our bread. Forgiving us, our forgiving us, that's in there. And the third one is delivering us, delivering us from evil, from temptation. I think it's got to be an understanding that actually when we come to God, that it's God-centred first. In Philippians 4, it makes very well that we should present our request to God with thanksgiving. 
It's God first. It's thanking him for what he's done before we present our requests to him. 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, us last, so God first, we have to humble ourselves, and pray and seek my face, i.e. seeking God's will first, and turn from their wicked ways, they've humbled themselves, I will hear from heaven, his throne room, his power, his sovereignty, and forgive their sins and restore their land. Restoring your needs. God first, us afterwards. Have you ever seen that in the prayer life? It's God first, us afterwards. So let's try and look at the Lord's Prayer slowly but surely. Our Father in heaven, well... When we're approaching prayer, do you know that you're approaching the creator and sustainer of the universe? So I know it's the bank holiday. Believe you me, this sermon will end in 20 minutes. (laughs) Oh, look, now you're cheerful. (laughs) Unbelievable. Lord, forgive them. I know it's you first. (laughs) Yeah, I know I'm meant to forgive them as well as you have forgiven me. I'll work on that later. Um... But our Father in heaven, when we approach him, you're having communication with the creator and sustainer of the universe. Amen? Amen. Both in the physical and the spiritual. He is the creator with total power over all. Amen? Amen. But we can then enter into that with him with a real sense of... (gasps) When you really take that, just for a minute. Who who woke up this morning? Who's still yet to wake up this morning? (laughs) But did you wake up with a sense of the normality of life? Rolled out of bed. Some of you might have fell out of bed, like I almost did this morning. That alarm went off and I went, oh, no, back to sleep. I woke up at four o'clock in the morning, that's the problem. But we can wake up and just look at everything around and just think normal. We might just say, oh, good morning, Lord. Or you might be one of these people you want to avoid talking to him. Because he's God, with the biggest G you could possibly entertain in your imagination, yes? Well, it says here, our Father. We're entering into communication with our Abba Father. The Father who is love. So because of what Jesus did on that cross, we can enter into that communication without trembling fear, but we can enter with humility at who he is against the backdrop of how he has forgiven us. Have you ever done that? Who sinned today? Yeah, who sinned today? (laughs) Not yet. (laughs) Think it says somewhere in the Bible. (laughs) Who sinned today? Seriously, you laugh, but bear with me. Just who has sinned? Who's really messed up already this morning? You think, well, it's not that bad. Before God, if you have sinned, you've messed up. Bear with me, I'm finished. But because of what Jesus did on that cross, you are forgiven. Amen? Amen. And the grace that is showered out upon you is because of God. And that prayer, our Father, our Abba Father in heaven, when I come before you in communication, I'm coming into the presence knowing I am forgiven because I come in the name of Jesus Christ. And when we recognise how much we have actually sinned before God, you in the same breath will recognise how much you have been forgiven. Does that? It's a real weird thing. 
But when you really acknowledge the wrongs that you've done and will do, and you realise how much, you, when you ask God to show to you and reveal to you, how much have I really offended you and sinned against you, you'll in the same breath see how much God has forgiven you. So when you then enter into prayer with him, you're going to go, woohoo! I mean it. But some of us enter in with that real sense of, uh oh, here we go, got to come with a whole baggage of stuff. But it's not. The opening prayer is God centered. My Abba Father, my Daddy in heaven. For some of you, it might resonate, you might almost want to say, my Mummy in heaven. Some of us don't like the idea of daddy because of our bad relationships. We can understand that. But you want to go, my daddy in heaven. And you can say that because he has forgiven you tons. It says in Psalm uh, 130 verse 4. Now, you might not get this, but it says this. But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. That word fear is not about trembling panic. It is about the awe. The, oh, do you mean, you literally mean that you offer forgiveness. And because you offer forgiveness, I should be in awe of that. Amen? Sometimes when we read the English translation of fear, we think I should be quaking in my boots and I should have no right to be here. But it's not. Because God, our Abba Father, our Daddy in heaven says, I offer you forgiveness for everything you've ever done. That's mind blowing, yes? No? Is that lame? You think, oh well. Oh, that's nice. Thanks very much. But think about how much you know you have done wrong. That's why I asked you, who sinned this morning? I put my hand up. Yeah, I'm just a man, just like everybody else. Thought a wrong thought earlier on. Not going to confess which one. But it has something to do with Carlene. So the... And her rudeness earlier. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Hi, mate. Um, the, but you've been forgiven tons. And at Psalm 130... We fear God in a sense of awe at his grace. I don't know, have you ever been overawed, been amazed at the grace that he's poured out on you? And the only other way we really know when that grace has been poured out on us and we're awed by it is when we recognise how much we have sinned against God. Oh, I'm not that bad. I didn't do that. that I, yeah, I can be excused that little that thing. I can be excused having slightly one too many last night. I can be excused for that, that evil thought I had about that person. I can be excused for this. And we think ourselves not too bad. When we think ourselves like we're not too bad, we don't then recognise the full amount of grace that's been poured out upon us. We take it lightly. But when you recognise, as I recognise my sinfulness, my wrongdoing before God, and I've got, I am nothing... When, I re when you recognise that, you'll recognise even more the grace that's been poured out upon you by Abba Daddy. We're not going to get through the whole of the Lord's Prayer. Because I think we here need to recognise what we've done wrong before God, so in order that we can recognise the grace. I want you, I'm not going to say anything else, I want you for one minute right now to sit before God right this second, right this second, and talk to him about your state with him. Thanking him for his grace afterwards. Do that now, a minute. Do you know, it's an amazing thing to recognise the grace that's been poured out of you and onto you. 
Because I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes you really don't want to acknowledge the bad things you've done. It is hard. The real ones. The ones that we know we've done, and we're just like, we'll back that off. God will forgive that. But he forgives everything. And, but sometimes it's hard to really look at ourselves and go, do you know something? Oh, my life, I'm worse than I thought I was before God. I didn't realise what sort of person I really was. But when you do that, God goes, yeah, I know. And I'm still going to shower grace over you. I still love you. I'm still your daddy in heaven. And that's a mind blower. So when you enter into prayer, enter into that concept that you know that our Abba Father, our Abba Daddy is going, I love you. Okay. So next bit. May your name be kept holy. Well, again, focusing on God first, that his name has to be kept holy. His name, now God is holy, amen? amen. He is other, amen? But actually that prayer is about keeping his name holy. Why is that? Well, by our actions and our words as followers of him depends whether his name is holy to other people. If he looks other to other people, because holy actually just means he is other, yeah? He's so completely not us, he is so other. And people will know who he is by our words, our actions, our deeds, yeah? Yeah? So if we confess God um, and we confess Jesus as our Lord and Saviour and yet we live a completely different lifestyle that, is, that is, is clearly no different from anybody else in the world who doesn't know him, then God's name is not going to look other, is it? They're going to say, well, you, you, it doesn't look very holy, do you? It's not about us going, ah, but it's about the way we are. May your name be kept holy. We have to honour his name by our humble actions and words in this world. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, it's a bit obvious really, it's God's will. God's will is here to be done on earth, yes? As it is in heaven. And it's his will, it's actually him being manifest. In heaven, he's manifest, amen? He's perfectly manifest, he's there. And we call upon his name to be manifest here on earth, yes? Guess what? It's through us. When we recognise how much grace is showered upon us and we can enter into his presence, when we recognise that it is, you know, how we live our lives will keep his name holy, his kingdom will be manifest here. His will will be done here through us. But you're ready for this. The way his will is done is when we dump our own will. When you come to the Father, and I, I can only action this out. It's the only way I can do it because I can't describe it. But when we come to the Father, you can come in your knees or whatever. But this is about what's going on in your heart, okay? Not so much in the physical. But when you come before the Father on your knees and recognising the grace that is showered out upon you, recognising the awe of how much we should love our God, recognising that his name needs to be holy, when you recognise, when you and I, we recognise that his will's got to be done because I'm going to give up my will to you today, Amen. I'm going to actually sacrifice anything to do with my reputation, anything about me, so that your will can become manifest. When we can do this in our hearts and our minds and our actions, God's kingdom comes. God's kingdom comes. It's what goes on in the heart. It's not about me, Lord. It's about you. It's God first. That's the basis of a Lord's Prayer. It's actually sacrificing yourself, taking up your cross daily. Literally means going, it's not my will. It's not what I want. It's what God wants. It's not about me. It's about God. God first us afterwards I mean because we can pursue our own agenda on all occasions can't we yeah wake up oh this is a good idea I think God wants this so let me pray for this I want this I know let's be really random for the sake of being really random um, 
I want an Aston Martin DB7. I'm sure God wants me to have one. Amen? Amen? Just a subtle hint. Um, I'm assuming there's going to be one when I become fully accredited in two weeks' time, no? No, no bonus card, no? Oh, okay. But we can think that's going to be our will and that God wants it. And you can self-believe that's what God wants for you. I mean, I clearly live in the reality. That's not what God wants for me. Yeah, oh, DB7, it's lovely, isn't it? Look at me, the sleek lines. I mean, there's not many cars you say that looks beautiful, but that really looks... Anyway, moving on. But the point being that you can convince yourself certain things is in God's will. But, and then you start generating that and really getting passionate. But you have to think about it. What well, is it in God's will? Have I actually surrendered today? Have I allowed God to work through me or work that in my life? Have I truly given it up to God? Or is it something I really want? And you have to test that with people. God first, us afterwards. And then it carries on. Give us today the food we need. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. Well, bread here is actually a symbol for our basic needs. That's why I like the voice version. Not more and not less. Give us exactly what we need for today. Some people try to over-spiritualise that and talk about, oh, it's about our spiritual needs. It's not. It's basic human needs. This is what you're praying for. I think it was Luther that put it really well. Um, it's about food, clothing, housing, peace, not luxuries. It's your basic needs, the basic things that we should have today. Sky TV does not come under a basic need. <laughs> or BT, or Netflix, or any other... Oh, Virgin, thank you. Any others we like to advertise for the internet, folks? But those don't come under our basic needs, do they? Nothing inherently wrong in having them, but we have to be cautious about what is basic needs and what is, oh, it's what I want. A DB7 is not a basic need. Ferrari F40, on the other hand. <laughs> When you come before God, you've put everything else before him. You've, 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 you, you recognise the grace that's poured out upon you. We live in that grace, not with a sense of, comf um, oh, yeah, I'm all right. We live in that grace thinking, wow, that's just amazing. So I want to keep your name holy, Lord. I want your will to be done because of the grace. You can then say, well, give, me, give us our basic needs today. And then forgive us our sins as we forgive those. Again, this comes back that we've been forgiven much by God. Yes? yes? So actually, anything anybody's ever done to us really pales into insignificance compared to what we've done to the holy God and how much he has forgiven us. We should be able to forgive others. Now, there are times people do need to come up to you, especially if it's a fellow brother or sister, and they need to ask for your forgiveness. They've wronged you. They do need to admit to it. But you should try and forgive them from your heart because you have been forgiven much. If your neighbours have offended you, you should try and forgive them because God has forgiven you much. That's the hardest one, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah? But we should, because of the grace that we recognise that has been poured out upon us. Let us not yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. What this is, is, Lord, do not allow us to be over... Normally it says, do not lead us into temptation, but actually God can't lead us into temptation. But God does allow trials to come our way, as in James 1, because it refines us. But what this is really meant to be saying in the Lord's Prayer is don't allow that temptation to, to overwhelm me, Lord. I think is it for us, it was the whole thing of, you know, God will not give you beyond what he won't allow you to handle in his strength and power. And that goes for all of us. But we shouldn't allow temptation to over. 
overwhelm us. We ask God to do that. And deliver us from evil really is actually from the evil one, from Satan. Keep us away from him. And these should be our basic outline prayer for the mornings. No good doing them late at night, folks. It's no good waking up in the morning. Waking up in the morning <laughs> and just getting on with the day. Do a quick touch with God. Hi. And get on. It should be our first thing in the morning. Style of prayer. God first, us afterwards. Is it Martin Luther? would pray for three hours every day during the working day before he started anything. So he says it's a complete waste of time him doing anything until he's been with the Father first. Because nothing's going to be accomplished. I think one of his famous quotes is, I am so busy today, I've got to spend three hours first with God. Ah, how many of us, including me, go, I'm so busy today, I've got to rush. Quick, get the kettle on, get the breakfast done, got to rush, get everybody out. And we've not actually gone, let's spend some time with God. Let's spend, saying, at least saying the Lord's Prayer, recognising who he is. When I discovered that wonderful art of spending some time with God, it's amazing how much my day went so much better. Not that rubbish didn't come, but my mind was more settled because you're with God. Prayer, what is it? And I'll be the first to admit that I have made the mistake in life of going, that's all right, I can do it on the go. Actually, it's wrong. We make that excuse based around our lifestyle because we think it makes life easier for us. And actually, we need to learn to stop and be with God. If Jesus had to do it, surely we should be doing it, amen? Amen. Actually, we need to do it even more. So the basic outline of this prayer, I have two minutes. You're praying frantically, I can see. The basic outline of this prayer is, this Lord's Prayer, it's God's first. Daddy in heaven, I can come before you because of the grace because I recognise I'm not as brilliant as I think I am. I want your name to be holy out there. Use me to make it holy. Lord, your will be done today through me. Not mine, but yours. And then because of all that, please give me my basic needs. Please do not allow the trials and temptations to overwhelm me today. Oh, I forgot the forgiveness bit. Forgive me, which you already have been, but sometimes we have to acknowledge some of them before him. And help me to forgive others because you have forgiven me. Amen? And in now your own mind, you can think of people who you think, yeah, I really should learn to forgive them. But I want to really ask you to take away today a really practical thing. God, in his word, when he comes before us, this is a practical thing. Do you know how God speaks to you? Primarily. Through this. Not this specific one. But through the Bible. How many of us read this on a daily basis, really? So don't don't stick your hands up, seriously, because... Be like everybody's going, oh no, hang on a minute. But if you want to hear from God, you need to start with this. We've fallen into the trap in our lovely postmodern society of going, I just hear from him in my head. But I think it was Martin, no, A.W. Tozer put it very well. Turns around and says, yeah, but people then fall into these whims and fantastical ideas that they believe are from God because they're not bothered to read this to make sure and test it against it. If you want to hear from God, start meditating on his word. Take a verse. Allow God in your prayer in, to manifest himself in you as you read this. Amen? Mm-hmm. 
says in verse 5 of that Psalm 130, I'm counting on the Lord. Yes, I'm counting on him. I've put my hope in his word. Hope is something that's not in this society. Hope is actually something a lot of us in this church still don't grasp. Read his word, you'll find the hope. God first, us afterwards. Amen? I want to go right back to the beginning because I think this is really important for this morning. It's the grace that has been poured out on you when you recognise your sinfulness. Same goes with me, I'm no different. I'm just like everybody else. When we recognise that grace, it's amazing how free you will feel. No good hiding it from God, your wrongdoing. He knows already. <laughs> it's about you acknowledging it before him. When you do that, <coughs> he will, in the same breath, show you the amount of grace that you have and how much he loves you. So I want us to take two minutes now before God. Again, I want you to go back to those conversations, that minute conversation you had with him. I want you now to take a moment, please, again, be honest with him, be, basically be honest with yourself about an area of life that you know that God is saying, come on, give it to me. Just while musicians are coming, some of you have offered up stuff that you know that you've done wrong. I now want you before God, because God's going, I want to show you the grace. I want to show you how much I love you right now. But you need to receive it. You need to acknowledge it before him. So I'd like you to do that right now. Close your eyes. do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.